Good morning, everyone. It's Robert from On My Turntable. Hope you're having a great morning this morning. It is Wednesday morning, as always, a coffee kind of morning. Cheers, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, a couple of days ago, I did um, 10 albums I absolutely love, but I never need to listen to again. And when I first did it, I got like 50 views or something. What the heck's going on? Why, why, why? This one ballooned up to over 760 views, which was amazing. Uh, thank you, everyone who watched and made comments and amazing. So, I thought I'd do a part two. Might be controversial, this one, for sure. This is 10 albums I love, but never need to listen to again. Part two. This one is worryful. Worrisome, sorry, because uh, I've got some amazing albums in this one, but... Overplayed, over listened to. Most of these are from my youth when I was you know, young, 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 young. Some of them very first albums. And I don't think I need to listen to them again. I'll keep them. I love them. I'll store them. Classics, all of them. Let's get started. <clears throat> Grand Funk or an American band. Probably my second album that I bought. Maybe. That was a long time ago. But I was very, very young in record buying. And it was a discovery for me. Um, amazing album. July 15th, 1973. Uh, Grand Funk's seventh studio album. Big hit, of course, the title track, which... I'm going to say this one over and over again in this video. Classic Radio Ruin. Uh, you also have Walk Like a Man on this one. Uh, Craig Frost, keyboardist, became an official member of the band. You also have Don Brewer, drummer and uh, vocalist. Uh, Mel Shocker on bass. And, of course, the great Mark Farner on guitars and uh, and vocals as well. Uh, but love on this one for a long time, over 50 years. I love it. But I never need to listen to it again, unfortunately. I'll keep it. This is a obviously not the original. Um, great, great album. But I never need to listen to it again. As well as this next one. Every time I pick up an album, I feel, crap, people are going to shit all over me. Zeppelin IV. One of my favorites. This is probably one of the first ones I got by Zeppelin. I got this one before, one and two, and three. Uh, I got those later in life, but uh, Zeppelin IV, 1971 release, their fourth studio album, called Zozo, called it un Untitled, whatever you want to call it. Uh, huge hit, of course, Stairway to Heaven. And so many bands afterwards came up with their own version of Stairway to Heaven in, in their own way. Um, I've had to listen to this one for a long, long time as well. Um, I ruined my original copy by trying to play Stairway to Heaven when I was a kid. Just over and over and over and over again. Um, I have it on both vinyl and CD. Uh, this is uh, produced by Jimmy Page, this one here. Um, you know, I love it. I love it. I've got the lyrics of Stairway to Heaven on my wall. What can you say? I just never need to listen to it again. The Oyster Cult, Ages of Fortune. Uh, this one's on the Columbia label. Probably the most commercially successful album. May 1976, their fourth album. I have all their studio albums, including their latest album, uh, Ghost Stories. Uh, the Symbol Remains is an amazing album. I love all their albums. I just never need to listen to Fear the Reaper again. Don't Fear the Reaper again. Their biggest hit. Um, over, overplayed. Um, 
Eric Bloom didn't do much writing on this one. You got this one has Albert Bouchard, uh, of course, uh, Buck Dharma, Joe Bouchard, Alan Lanier. Um, Patty Smith does some vocals on this one as well. Awesome, awesome album. I just never need to listen to it again. I prefer listening and discovering their later stuff. Uh, Symbol Remains is one of my new favorite Blue Oyster Cult albums. Uh, this one, I love it, but never need to listen to it again. Uh, that's at number eight. Number seven. Again, another one from my youth. Crime of the Century, Super Tramp. It's on the AM label. Um, one of their best albums, in my opinion. Um, I showed... Uh, I showed Breakfast... Uh, um, I showed their Breakfast album earlier in my earlier video, but... Um, yeah, Crime of the Century. <laughs> One of my favorites from my youth. Uh, this is the uh, probably my, my discovery of these guys. I saw them in concert in Ottawa on this one. Their third studio album, 1974 release. Uh, Buddy Well Wright was one of my favorites. But I've heard it, heard it, heard it, heard it. School, classic, dreamer, classic. Um, but I'll put this one away for, for a long while. And, uh, not that I don't love Super Tramp. I think they're great. It's just, again, overplayed, overheard. I'll put it away. As well as this one. Queen, Night at the Opera. Um, I have all Queen studio albums. And uh, I think they're brilliant. But uh, if I never hear Bohemian Rhapsody again for the rest of my life, I'll be fine with it. But it's it's weird to see all these reaction videos reacting to Bohemian Rhapsody, saying I've never heard it before. You know, who's, who are you fooling? Who are you fooling? Um, this was, again, my introduction to Queen. I love all the little ditties in there. But I've heard it over and over and over again. I prefer, and I lean towards their first three albums, which are heavier, darker, um, more heavy metal-like in some of the first couple. But uh, Night of the Opera. Love it, but I'll put it away for a while. Uh, classic Rock Radio ruined this one for me. Uh, that's why I don't listen to uh, classic rock anymore and don't shoot me don't shoot me please moving pictures heard it played it love it I've got even got the uh, remastered um, 40th anniversary edition okay um Remarkable album. Probably the most commercially successful album from these guys. Um, overplayed. Um, <laughs> uh, another one. Um, I have all their studio albums, Rush. And I love them. One of my most favorite Canadian bands as well as international bands. Uh, this is the 8th album, 1981 release. Okay. Uh, you got Limelight, Vital Signs, Tom Sawyer, um, every hit on here, Camera's Eye. You know, it's just amazing stuff, but uh, I've listened to it. It's funny, I never tire of their debut album. Uh, I love it. Uh, some of their later stuff I love as well. This one here is just, again, overplayed, overplayed, but um, still an amazing album. I'll keep it. I'll cherish it. I'll love it. I just won't listen to it again. At number four, this one might be a surprise as well. Aqualung. 
this was definitely my introduction to Jethro Tull, who I've grown to get most of their studio albums. I think I'm missing one. Uh, I was blown away by this one. The title track. Um, Hymn 43. Um, Locomotive Breath. Just an excellent, excellent album. Uh, so unique. Uh, this is a Stephen Wilson remix. This is not the original. Uh, he did such a great job remixing this one. Four Studio Album, 1971 release. Um, Jethro Tull. Uh, some of the later releases now are kind of more uh, Ian Anderson solo albums. But their earlier stuff is, is remarkable. But uh, this one here, I just, again, overplayed, overheard. Love it, cherish it, but I won't listen to it again. I'm sorry. This next one may be another surprise. Paranoid. Black Sabbath. I have the Super Deluxe Edition, the 2023 Super Deluxe Edition as well. So, again, this was my second maybe third album that I ever bought when I was a kid um, what can you say about this one War Pigs, Amazing, Paranoid Amazing Planet Caravan Amazing, Iron Man Amazing Electric Funeral, Hand of Doom Rad Salad, Bears Wear Boots All All Amazing Album uh, Sorry Songs um, this is uh, their second album 1970 release I've just heard it over and over and over again. Uh, I love everything on this Super Deluxe Edition. But uh, some of the deeper tracks and some of the um, live tracks are still kind of cool. But over, I've heard it. Again, overplayed. Over listened to. I'm looking forward to the, um, and I'll probably get this one, the Anno uh, Domini. 1989 to 1995, uh, the Tony Martin years, it's uh, coming soon, I think 1st of July, or 1st, or, sorry, 1st of June, so I may pick up this, that one this weekend, um, something refreshed, something new, um, I'm not familiar with the Tony um, Martin years, but what I've heard and what I've seen of it, it's uh, amazing, so I'm looking forward to that uh, That version of sabbath but this one here as much as i love this album i'll give it a rest for a while um these next these last two may be a super super surprise maybe not dark side of the moon pink floyd a genius of an album uh, something that you listen to and hear something new every time you listen to it but I've listened to it from my youth when I just sat there with headphones on and discovered I discovered it uh, uh, from a minister's son introduced me to this one. Um, one of my favorites of from my youth. Um, but I never need to listen to it again. I know every note. I never know every lyric. March 1st, 1973 release. Uh, not even the Roger Waters 2000 and... Uh, 23 uh, Redux version can save me from listening to actually probably ruined me from listening to the dark side of the moon <laughs> on this one uh, I love that one yeah that's 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 nice to see um, he couldn't even change my mind on that one so uh, I will still remain in my collection but uh, yeah I'll never need to listen to it again and this last one Probably the most controversial, most surprising. <sighs> Here we go. Machine Head, Deep Purple. My favorite album of all time. But I know every freaking note of it. I know every inch of this album. And I never need to listen to it again because it's just imprinted into my brain. Uh, this would be their um, their third 
of the Mark II version, December 1971. Ian Gillen, Ian Pace, Roger Glover, John Lord, Richie Blackmore. You had Never Before, Lazy Highway Star, Smoke in the Water. Um, yeah, never need to listen to it. I've got the Anniversary Edition on CD featuring different guitar solos, remixes. I even, and this one is a definitely a collector's item. It's the 50th anniversary with purple vinyl, you know, um, just definitely part of my collection. But I never need to listen to the album again because I know every inch of it. I know every part of it. I know every song. The cool thing about the remixed is that you hear different stuff um, by um, Dweezil Zappa. So he enhanced a lot of that stuff, which is cool. But I prefer the original versions of it. But uh, that album I've listened to over and over and over again. Um, since, because it was my very first album I bought when I was 11, 12 years old. Who is Deep Purple? I love the cover. I love the the imagery on the on the on the album, you know, all this stuff, and the story behind the the song, the inner cover with all the little pictures and stuff, amazing stuff. But I never need to listen to it again. So there you have it, guys. Don't shoot me, don't kill me, don't hate me, love me. <laughs> and uh, there's part two. I won't be doing any more because it's just too hard to choose all these albums. Love you all. Talk to you again soon. Bye now.